Well, allow me to extend a very warm welcome to you, our viewers. Today is the 5th of July, 2020, and we are actually worshiping together in this Evensong service, being the fourth Sunday after Trinity. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you today for giving us another opportunity to worship in this service. We ask that, Lord, as our viewers join us in this service, that you grace us in every aspect of it, only for your glory. Because this we've humbly prayed and asked in Jesus' name. Amen.
dearly beloved brethren, the scripture moves us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, and that we should not dissemble nor clock them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with an humble, lowly, penitent, and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, yet ought we most cheerfully so to do when we assemble and meet together to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands to set forth his most holy praise and to hear his most holy word and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore, I pray and beseech you, as many as are joining us today, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice unto the throne of the heavenly grace, kneeling, saying together. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have heard the strength from the grace of fellowship. We have followed the mind, the devices, and the desires of our own hearts. We have offended the devices that we lost. We have left and done those things which we should not have done. And we have done those things we should not have done. And there is no help in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O Lord, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises, declared unto Mankai in Christ Jesus our Lord, and grant to us, Master Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who riseth not the death of a sinner, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn it from his wickedness and live, and hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent and unfeignedly believe in his gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit that those who things which may please him, which we do at this present, and the rest of our lives and hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at last we may come to his eternal joy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips. and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever. 
The first reading is taken from 2 Timothy chapter 4, beginning to read at verse 1. 2 Timothy chapter 4, beginning to read at verse 1. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing and his kingdom, I give you this charge, preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. For the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. But you, keep your head in all situations, endure hardship, do work for an evangelist, discharge all the duties of your ministry. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is taken from 2 Timothy chapter 2, beginning to read at verse 1. 2 Timothy chapter 2, beginning to read at verse 1. You then, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses and trust to reliable people will also be qualified to teach others. Join with me in suffering like a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No one serving as a soldier gets entangled in civilian affairs, but rather tries to please his commanding officer. Similarly, anyone who competes as an athlete does not receive the victor's crown except by competing according to the rules. 
the hardworking farmer should be the first to receive a share of the crops. Reflect on what I am saying, for the Lord will give you insight into all this. This is the word of the Lord. To all our viewers watching us this evening, I want to welcome you very warmly even as we engage on the subject growing in our faith. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we pray that you may help us to learn from your word, that through the words that I share today briefly, that through your spirit we may be able to gather and know what you have for us in terms of our, our spiritual growth in faith. This we humbly ask in Jesus' name. Amen.
As we meditate on the words that have been read from the book of 2 Timothy chapter 4 and chapter 2 respectively, Paul is writing to a young preacher named Timothy. And this is a young man that Paul placed his hands upon and ordained to preach the gospel. So he writes to him because he knows his time is short, that before he leaves this world, he may be able to impart some wisdom on how Timothy can grow in faith. And he begins by reminding him very, very openly to endure hardness as a good soldier of Christ, because no man that was entangles himself in the affairs of this life that it may please him he has, he has chosen. What Paul is reminding Timothy is that, Timothy, you must grow in faith. And what, when, when he shares this to Timothy, he begins to outline a few things from the background that will be of great help to Timothy. What he's reminding Timothy is that, Timothy, hey, for you to grow in faith, number one, you must be dedicated. You must be committed. Because you're a good soldier of Christ. When our local soldiers go to war, in the uniform of these soldiers is a flag that is patched on them to remind them of their dedication to the cause of their country. And in the same way, Paul is reminding Timothy, hey, you're a soldier, and you owe your commitment to your country, which is heaven. So church, for you to grow in the faith, my viewer, remember to dedicate yourself to God. Number two, Paul is telling Timothy to endure hardness as a good soldier. To endure hardness simply means that you do not allow yourself to be easily discouraged. You must be prepared for conflicts at all times. Because it is true that even, the, at, even when you engage in war, you meet people who are giving up along the way. But even as they give up along the way, you must encourage yourself in the Lord and have what is called the strength to endure. David in 1 Samuel chapter 30, when they got to Ziklag and they found that the Amalekites had taken away their wives and children, the Bible declares that the soldiers threatened to kill him. They carried a stone. But the Bible declares that even though they threatened to kill him, David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. And that's how David grew in the faith. So my viewers, as you're watching this message today, I want to encourage you at this particular time, through the words of Paul to Timothy, endure hardness as a good soldier. Be dedicated to the cause of Christ at all costs. And number two, have the strength to endure, no matter how painful it is. Let me conclude by saying this. It is not all the time that we feel like doing what we do. It is not all the time I have personally woken up as a preacher and preached because I feel it is good for me to preach. Our feelings sometimes would deceive us because we feel tired, we feel weary, we feel like we, want, we don't want to move on. We feel like sometimes we just want to relax. But Paul admonishes you and me today to endure hardness as a good soldier. So as you grow in your faith, endure hardness as a good soldier and be dedicated to the cause of Christ. I share that in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us now stand with Christians throughout the centuries and throughout the world today to affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, 
suffered at a Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and he descended into hell. The third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and seated on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. He will come and the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of sins, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. The Lord be with you, and, and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us. And grant us thy salvation. O Lord, bless our rulers. And mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. And you, thy ministers, with righteousness. And make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people. And bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord. Because there is none other that fighteth for us, but only thou, O God. O God, make clean our hearts within us. And take not thy Holy Spirit from us. Today is the fourth Sunday after Trinity. Let us join in saying the collect. O God, the protector of all that trust in thee, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy. Increase to multiply upon us the mercy that thou being our ruler and guide. We may so pass through these temporal, that we finally lose not the things eternal. Grant this, O Heavenly Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our Lord. Amen. O God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works do proceed, give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that both our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that thy being, thy thee in we being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Together, lighten Amen. our Amen. darkness with the city of Lord. And by thy great mercy, defend us from all the errors and dangers of this night. For the love of thy only Son. Our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. O Lord, our Governor, whose glory is in all the world, we commend this nation to thy merciful care, that being guided by thy providence, we may dwell secure in thy peace. Grant to our President and to all the in authority, wisdom, and strength to know and to do thy will. Fill them with the love of truth and righteousness, and make them ever mindful of their calling to serve this nation in thy fear. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee, and in the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, who alone workest great marvels, send down upon our bishops and curates and all congregations committed to their charge the healthful spirit of thy grace, and that they may truly please thee. Pour upon them the continued dew of thy blessing. Grant this, O Lord, for the honor of our advocate and mediator, Jesus Christ. Together, Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord, 
to make our common supplications unto thee. And dost promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as we be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. Brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. We want to appreciate the very fact that God has given us an opportunity to come and worship him. And for you who are watching us, we want to thank you absolutely from the depths of our hearts on behalf of the provost and the pastoral team of this cathedral for your generosity in terms of your giving. We must say that God has been gracious and for the much that has been placed in our hands, God has enabled us to be faithful. And I will continue to encourage you to continue faithfully giving towards the work that God may continue to open the heavens and bless us in our respective contexts. Now, our pay bill for offering tithes and organ restoration is 303036. And then our pay bill for the Children and Teens Center is 303035. I must say that the Children and Teens Center has taken, has actually progressed well, and we want to thank you for being very generous once again with your giftings. Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the way you've given us an opportunity to worship you with our gifts. And even as you continue in this noble course, may your blessings continue to be showered upon all our viewers, and may you all continue to pour your favor upon us. Because this we've prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. Our dear viewers, we want to thank you for joining us in this even song service. I want to remind you that next week, at the same time, we shall be worshiping together. And I want to warmly welcome you to join us in the same as we adore our Lord and worship. Let us pray. We give thanks, O oh God for all that you have given us. Pour out your blessings on the gifts that we offer today, that our viewers have given, that they might be a source of blessing in our church, in our community, 
and in our world. Through this act of sharing by your servants, may we counter fear with hope in this time of anxiety and transform scarcity through generosity. We pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now, brothers and sisters, the Lord bless you, the Lord keep you, the Lord make his face shine on you and give you peace and be gracious to you. The Lord look kindly upon you and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Thank you.